guys, today I'm back with my monthly favorites video. We're gonna be talking about everything that I loved in the month of June and stick to the end. Of course, I will be doing my subscriber of the month, but this is a very special one. It's in partnership with and sponsored by Avon. As you know, I've worked with them in the past, both on kind of partnerships more makeup based, but in addition to that, they helped me out to no end and thousands of women over the holidays when I was partnered with a drop-in center here in Toronto, specifically for women and they donated over a thousand products at that time, little gift bags of like shower gel and stuff. And I think I did a video about it around Christmas and I was crying and it's just so special to me. And I think Avon, everybody kind of has an Avon memory. I know mine is my grandmother's Avon catalogs and it was around the holidays and I ordered a gingerbread scented lip gloss and I was just like, wow, this is the best day ever. But <laughs> today we're here to talk about the Avon Power of Lipstick campaign. And I mentioned those other things because it's very in line with their brand for women empowerment. So the Power of Lipstick campaign is Avon partnering or donating to the Dress for Success organization, if you've heard of them before. They're a nonprofit organization. They help to empower women to achieve economic independence by providing a network of support along with professional attire and things like development tools to help women thrive both work and in life. And I had to read that off the sheet because I really wanted to cover everything they do because it's an incredible organization. They have over 12,000 volunteers. They've helped over 1 million women and it's very important. You know and I know, being a part of this beauty community, it's really fun to slap things on your face and play with glitter, but also there's something so intrinsic and important to makeup in my life anyways. Not only has it helped me build a great connection with people all around the world, but it does give me that boost of confidence. And you know, a lot of the time, if you don't feel good, you're not able to perform your best. Not saying you need a lipstick to perform your best, but there's something to that. Especially if you are a woman in need, having those extra things, I can only imagine how how much that would give you a boost. So what I'm getting at, Avon is donating one lipstick to the Dress for Success organization for every two lipsticks purchased. Now they have a deal for two for $9.99. So not only do you get to treat yourself, but you also get to treat somebody else. I'm getting like goosebumps here talking about this. I just think it's really special. I think it's really important and I'm so glad to be able to be a part of this campaign and, and kind of forward that information onto you because I think it is so incredibly important and I think there's just, if there's just something really beautiful about it. I did not, <laughs> okay. I am not wearing waterproof mascara, so I can't have this whole breakdown. It's a good thing, it's a happy thing, and I wanted to uh, really spread the word and talk to you a little bit about it in depth and why it's important to me and, and why, th why I think it's such an important thing to participate in. And you know, you're getting a lipstick for yourself, a friend, a loved one, and also someone else is getting that kind of boost to help make a fresh start. So I'm wearing the shade Hot Pink right now, but I've selected 10 of the 70 shades available. There's multiple finishes as well, so there's kind of something for everybody, but I've picked out 10 shades that I really love. So uh, let's go ahead and get into some lip swatches. Those are just 10 of 70 shades, a ton available, all on avon.ca. And like I mentioned earlier, two lipsticks for $9.99. And for every two that you purchase, Avon will donate one lipstick to dress for success. So I think that that is just incredible. Like claps to Avon and claps to anybody who decides to participate in this. If you do, send me a picture, send me your lip, like a picture, don't send me your lipsticks. Send me a picture of you wearing your lipsticks, whatever it may be. I think it's super important and I think it's a great way to kind of participate and you know do your do your bit for for the ladies out there so thank you to Avon for this amazing campaign and thank you uh, again to Avon to for selecting me to be a part to help spread the word but let's go ahead and get into my favorites 
Okay, I'm trying to get back into favorites mode now. I'm feeling like all the emotions are just bubbling up and I'm like, okay, get back to a place where you can rave about shimmery eyeshadows. <laughs> Cause that's what I'm about to do. I wanna chat about this palette. I got lots of questions about it. I have two Instagram tutorials now on it. So one for this look and one for a more purpley look. And then I have another question that I will get to momentarily. But what I wanna mention as my first favorite besides the Avon lipsticks, of course, is the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. I I think that this is the best palette they've ever done and I think that this is a really exciting palette for a number of reasons. I think that it's warm but not too warm and it's not it looks interesting to me. It looks like something new. I think it's exciting. I think there's a lot of colors in here that I don't have that I'm excited to play with. And it doesn't feel confusing because I find sometimes with the Vice palettes, they come out and I can see absolutely, and I know I feel it myself, how they could be a little bit intimidating because there's just kind of colors everywhere. But there's something about this layout, there's something about the combination that just really, really excites me. And I think you could do so many different looks with it. For the formulation, I think it's great. I've had a really, really good experience with it. I find the mattes are not as dry as I've experienced in the past with Urban Decay because none of the Naked palettes really appeal to me up until Naked Heat and then Naked Petite Heat. I really liked those, but those were warm, orangey, orangey, orangey. So I can also see how somebody may not gravitate towards that. But this, I really love it. I'm super, super excited about it. So my question to you was, is, uh, although I've done two looks on Instagram, do you want to see this in a get ready with me? Because I know I've had a lot of questions for more blues and greens. So that's why I've kind of been savoring these shades here, which I think are super interesting. So let me know if you'd like to see it in another video. And just quickly touching on the packaging, I think it's great. Ton of shades in here, but it's still a convenient size. It's flat, it's sturdy, it's got a nice mirror in here. And I think that this is uh, the best eyeshadow palette that Urban Decay has ever done. So really, really pleased with this. I tested out two foundations this month that I was just super pleased with and really, really happy to have some great foundations on the roster, especially with summer for my oily skin friends. So if you missed it, I had a what's new at the drugstore week where I reviewed the latest launches from Rimmel, L'Oreal, and CoverGirl. I will link to all of those down below. So the foundation from CoverGirl, the True Matte Made, this I love. I think it is so good and thank you so much to everybody who loved my video. I did a white t-shirt test. We did a whole bunch of things testing out its transfer proofness and I'm so glad that you enjoyed this but I think this foundation is incredible. If you saw my most recent weekly vlog which by the way you guys I, this is just the most emotional video ever but that was a very emotional video. It was very personal um, and the, and you saw me like crying wearing this foundation. My channel's just me crying now, okay? Welcome to 2018, Samantha. But this just holds up so well. It's It, it really just kind of sticks to your face. I, I don't think it's 100% transfer proof, but I don't think anything is in my opinion. But I think that this just holds up so well. Great shade range. Uh, I love the shade T30 on me. So if you want to see it in the CoverGirl video, it's there. And then I also have a full uh, wear test. And then I also wear it in the weekly vlog like three different times because I was testing it out then. So a few more ways that you can check it out there. Another foundation that I love, this one is a little bit lighter coverage. It's the Benefit Hello Happy Soft Blur Foundation. So really, really into this. This is the kind of foundation, like I mentioned in my video, that's like a, a no concealer possible foundation because it's a little bit lighter coverage. If I was to go in with like Estee Lauder Double Wear and not put anything on my under eyes, it would be a little bit jarring. But this actually in the um, opening, in the intro and outro of my most recent vlog, I was just wearing this because I was like, I don't really want to put on a whole face of makeup, but I'd like a little something. So I just put this on and I think it's beautiful. I was really impressed with this. I think that it has a great wear time. It looks so natural on the skin. You get a little SPF in there. So this is a really great lightweight option if you were looking for something moving into summer. I have two glowy skin options that I want to mention. The first First came out of the drugstore week and this is from Rimmel. It is their Insta Strobing Highlighter. So I was sent the shade Bronze Glow, which is what I would have not picked up myself. I would have gotten the gold one, worn it as a liquid highlighter, and I still actually might pick that up because I feel like it could be beautiful after trying this. But I feel like I've ended up, and if you saw my highlighter declutter, I probably decluttered several bronzy liquid things because I'm like, ooh, it's so pretty. But then I never actually use it on my face at least. At most, I'll kind of like feel guilty and 
mix it into a moisturizer. So uh, this I used on my face as a bronzer, especially on my forehead, as high maintenance as that sounds, like as a product that I would pretty much just use on my forehead. But I thought it gave such a beautiful glow and warmth to the skin. I think you can mix it in with a foundation. I mixed it in, I only tried it once and I didn't put in very much, so I didn't see a huge difference. But I thought this was beautiful. It comes in this bronze shade along with a gold and a pink. So don't overlook this. I feel like these kind of products get overlooked sometimes and I feel like Rimmel gets overlooked sometimes, but I, I really like this. And then a brand that I've gotten questions about before and I was curious about is RMS. So this is their Magic Luminizer and I've seen a lot of people use this, but it's a lot of like dry skin folks who have good skin which is neither of those things are me. So I was kind of like unsure. I used this uh, in a video a little while back if you wanna see it in action, I will link to it down below, but I really love this, especially if you have textured skin. I like using this, I don't love it as much on top of powdered skin, but I do like it on top of my foundation and then when you put a little bit of light powder over it, I think it still gives you a really, really beautiful glow, super natural, as to be expected from a product and a brand like this, but there's definitely enough glow and enough impact that it's not just kind of one of those cleaner beauty products that really doesn't do anything. Um, if you are a makeup lover and you do like to actually, you know, kind of see a little bit more impact, I definitely am impressed with this. And I know I've seen lighter skin people use this. I've used this. And my friend Aisha, who is a, I don't know what she is in MAC. Are we truly friends if I don't know her MAC shade? She like a, she's more than a 45. 50 something? Anyways, she used it, she liked it, so I feel like it does work for a variety of skin tones. I wanna to mention a brush. I'm trying to do a better job of mentioning brushes. I did a, a video recently about the first 10 brushes I would purchase if I lost all my brushes, and I didn't include this one, but I'm mentioning it now because I've started using it in place of a bronzer brush that I mentioned in that video. And I'm kind of particular about, about my bronzer brushes. And this is one that I've actually started using and enjoying and I've had for a while, but I just never reached for. I, I think I kind of didn't realize I would like it for bronzer. So this is the Quo powder brush. So it's actually meant for powder, but if you can see, it's kind of tapered and I really like it just for the forehead along here, along down here. And I know a lot of people love Quo brushes. I feel like it's one of the things that people talk about the most. I don't have a ton of experience with them. I think this is probably the first I've tried. I do get a little bit of shedding. I feel like that's because I only just started using that. And I find sometimes with newer brushes, like even my NARS Eda brush, that's a $60 brush that shed at first and then it stops. So I feel like that's kind of common. Um, but I really do love the shape of this. I think it has a great taper to it and it kind of reminds me of like a little bit of a smaller version of some of those really expensive powder brushes uh, and I know that Quo brushes go on sale at shoppers quite often. I have one hair item that I want to mention and this is from the brand Kristen S. I believe it's been around for a little while but more recently it became available on well.ca for my Canadian friends. This is their frizz management cleansing conditioner for all curly hair types, frizz controlling, humidity combating, moisture reviving, low sudsing co-wash. So I'm huge on the co-wash game. I don't really know a ton about it to get super technical, but basically it's what I use when I don't want to use a shampoo and conditioner. It cleans your hair, but it's primarily conditioning it, which is great for curly hair because if I want to wear my hair like this, for the most part, I have to wash it in the morning. So if I have events or if I'm filming, I always kind of, I'm trying to wear my hair down as much as possible because I so easily just stick it up in a bun and say, you know, whatever. <laughs> but this is easy because it's super conditioning to the point where I can uh, detangle it. I can run my fingers through my hair after I've let it sit in there but it does give you that clean feeling without stripping your hair it's quite affordable as well I believe it's um under $20 for sure all of the packaging and stuff is gorgeous I actually have a blog post reviewing the, this line as well and I've been really really impressed with it but I definitely wanted to mention this co-wash because co-washes I find they're not as readily available in Canada as they are in the United States and this is a great brand so been using this a ton it's like I would say 60% gone which says a lot and uh, I really enjoy it. I want to talk about this mask it is the Ula Henriksen cold plunge pour mask with clay and snow lotus extract I really like it I know that this is like YouTube and Instagram's favorite mask. So I know when I posted about this on Instagram, I was getting questions and I know that I am also on YouTube and Instagram, but I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna weigh in on it. Um, this mask also has um, alpha hydroxy acid, AHA, which I really like for my skin. I found that ha I, I've been using that AHA, BHA from Drunk Elephant and I find it's really helped with my texture. I kind of thought that this was just a clay mask. I didn't realize that it had those properties in it. Keep in mind, if you are using this, when you are using AHAs and BHAs, it's even more important to use sunscreen 
cream, but I like this. First of all, on a completely, what's the word I'm looking for? Where you just care about like the appearance. It begins with an S. I know you're screaming it at me. I've lost the word. Is it not? Not shallow. Anyways, so unimportant, but on a just like looks level, I love the color of blue that this is, and I love that it goes on your skin really easily. A little bit goes a long way. You get an even coat, because you know how you see when you, like when you see people wearing masks on Instagram, it's like they've painted it on and it looks perfect. But in practice, you know, is it really gonna do that? Not that it's necessarily important, but it is important to get an even layer on your face. So I find with my fingers, it's easy just to spread on. A little bit goes a long way. It does feel very, very cooling on the skin it feels really nice um, and I do feel like it helps kind of with the retexturizing process that I'm going um, through with my skin right now I you know I've only been using this for a couple weeks but I really do feel a difference it feels like a true treatment like sometimes with masks you know you're like I think it feels good but I really feel like this is doing something the only downfall to this and please be careful when you're washing this off your face keep your eyes closed keep them closed the whole time because it has that menthol-y minty i don't know what's in here to do it but don't get those suckers in your eyeballs because it burns it burns so badly which i mean i've i've it might be that way with other masks but this especially like even just the fumes of the water and the mask and the eyes it's a whole thing but the mask itself i think is fabulous lastly i'm going to mention a cleanser which i i love a good cleanser cleansers are fine but it's never really something that i'm like wow i see this doing something completely different unless you know it has exfoliating properties or like that neutrogena mask that doubles as a clay cleanser like i don't have a lot there's some that i like that i have a hard time like pointing them out as liking them because i'm kind of like what really matters about this it's on your face for like five seconds what i love about this it is the kiehl's calendula deep cleansing foaming face wash it's for normal to oily skin types first of all i've used this a ton and it's only right here you need the smallest amount it's a gel texture but it's incredibly thick and i'll use a cleansing oil to get the majority of the makeup on my, off my face but when i follow up with this i think that this does such a good job removing the rest of your makeup and leaving your face feeling clean and smooth but not stripping it because it is made for oily skin uh, it says that it has uh, candula flower extract glycerin and it's deep cleansing but it it's deep cleansing but it's so gentle because it has that gel texture it's kind of unsuspecting a lot of the you know deep cleansing things have you know they're black because of charcoal or they have exfoliants or a strong scent or whatever it may be and this just kind of looks unassuming and i didn't expect much of it but i find myself reaching for it all the time which i can't say about a lot of cleansers and which i i only kind of just noticed now is how little i've actually used considering how much i've used if that makes sense so definitely definitely uh recommend this if you are a makeup wearer with oily skin for my subscriber of the month, it is Gina. I don't know your last name. I don't know anything else, but I know that I really like you. I think you might be newer to my channel unless you've like changed your username or something. Cause I was looking back at the comments and it seems like you only started commenting about a month or two ago, but you comment consistently and you comment great things. Like I feel like we've got a thing going on. We understand each other. It's a great back and forth. And of course I truly appreciate your support and you know, taking time out of your day, all of you taking time out of your day to watch these videos. So. Shout out to Gina with no last name and a purpley icon. But thank you so much for watching this. Be sure to check out Avon.ca for their Power of Lipstick campaign. I think it's incredibly important to give back in any way you can. And I think that this is a more or less affordable way to do it in a way that you're also getting uh, some great lipsticks and someone else is getting you know, a fresh start and a way to kind of help empower themselves. One of the steps to, to doing that. So I think it's super important to be sure to check it out down below. I also have a blog post that outlines some more information along with the swatches of all the lipsticks that I've tried on today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Samantha Jane YT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!